Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm Tao Wei. Most of my friends call me Dave. I'm the chair of TOCC. And uh, today I will give you a brief introduction of OER of higher education in Taiwan, including OCW, MOOCs, and the Open Textbook. In Taiwan, OCW start at National Jiaotong University in 2006, and our consortium was founded in two years later, 2008. The original name is Taiwan Open Courseware Consortium and renamed to Taiwan Open Course and Education Consortium later. We have 20 members and collect 13, 11 complete video courses. OCW was one of the most successful e-learning projects launched in Taiwan. In 2006, two facts made this project successful. First one is MIT OCW. And the second is the rise of the internet and the digital technology. However, the openness means free and easy to access, which conflicts the traditional value of higher education because they were built on the principles of scarcity and disclosure. This conflicts made most of the conservative professor against OCW and even anything related to openness at that time. Here you will see the growth of the usage of OCW from 2012 to 2017 and then dramatically dropped in 2018 and 2019. The decreasing usage may come from two main reasons. First, some of OCW were taken down for some reason. Second, most of our members begin to produce MOOCs from 2014 and stop creating any new OCW after 2018. Nevertheless, the number of the unique visitors is still kept around 2 million in 2019 which is equal to one twelfth of the Taiwanese population and means one out of 12 Taiwanese has watched OCW in 2019, which is quite a big number. From this figure, you may be surprised at the number in 2013. In fact, this number is the total number added from 2008 and to 2013 because some problem in our platform is down. Therefore, if we divide this number by years, you will get the average number around 2,200 units per year, which, which is almost close to the number of 2014 and 2016. It is 2018, this year, when most of our members stopped producing new OCW unit. The high popularity, of, high popularity of OCW in Taiwan, there's several reasons. Most of OCW courses are the video OCW. And second, most of our members assign their excellent teacher to provide OCW of their favorite classes. Third, our members offer OCW of their special feature research field, which assure the British and the death of OCW. Fourth, most of OCW provide the complete lectures of the classes, which help students a lot. Some students just study OCW and they, they can go to the graduate, good graduate school. Now, although OCW is an important learning material, but how how to continue to create OCW become the challenge to every university. Here is the list of the challenges. First, financial support problem. Second, bandwidth problem. Third, this is the most important problem, student attendance problem. S some students 
they just watch OCW and didn't go to the face 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 to face classes. And the professor now question about if you just watch OCW, if how the learning effect, and the, some question come out more and more. And we, in order to find out the solution of this problem, we search some master thesis and come out with some interesting result. The left table show there's only 40 master research within 11 years, which means the average number is around four theses per year. But if you look at the right number, it shows the total number is 146 within seven years. The average MA thesis focus on the MOOCs is around 20 thesis per year. MOOCs attract five times research interest in than OCW in Taiwan. Okay, now we look at the MOOCs in Taiwan. In 2013, MOOCs project launched in Taiwan. There's one MOOCs consortium called Chinese Open Education Consortium. In addition, there's a four main MOOCs platform. They use different technology for, to build up their MOOCs platform. Unlike OCW, MOOCs need much more technical support and create more interesting research. For example, platform technology research, effective video research, pedagogical research, business model research, communication technology research. In addition, MOOCs cover more diversified types of online courses in order to attract more learners. In the left figure, you will see 12 different types of MOOCs on E1 platform. For example, the interest in the test of life, art creation, and also including uh, techni technology and the measurement. Here is the number from the courtesy from E1 and Taiwan Life platform. The number of MOOCs on E1 platform increasingly dramatically since 2013. Furthermore, the population of MOOCs also increased a lot, especially in 2018 and this year, especially COVID-19 years. In fact, MOOCs has two major challenges, including high running cost of the platform and the courses. The high running cost of MOOCs platform comes from the internet running cost and the management of diversified MOOCs classes. And most of the classes doesn't belong to one university. So fish, most of university does, do not want to support MOOCs platform. Therefore, searching a good business model become the first priority of the MOOCs platform. The running high cost of MOOCs courses come from the management of great number of learners, including QA and the grading loading. Some MOOCs in Taiwan turn into Spark when the wishes to become part of the regular class, then the problem of the credit hours equivalency and the learning effect become the main concern of the university administration. Due to the free access and the good content provided by the open textbook, TOCC launched the open textbook project in 2019. In this year, TOCC provided 10 seminars about open textbook and collect 41 reviews of open textbooks. And there's 14 courses adopting open textbook. And now we have one published open textbook. And later on, there's one research will focus on the open textbook around the 11, 14, uh, this, the, uh, this, uh, this today, okay. 
So that is the current situation of OER of higher education in Taiwan. Thank you for listening. Yep. Okay, thank you, Dad. Um, the next panelist is the Ray. Yeah, you can share your screen. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Yeah. If okay. Um, so, uh, hello everyone, I'm Ray from Taiwan. And today I'm going to share uh, a little bit about the cross-sector co-creating uh, co OER in K-12 in Taiwan. And I think it's an ecosystem collaboration strategy uh, within a small country context like Taiwan. Uh, because the bigger one, such as China, India, and uh, the US has big market uh, in K-12 uh, context. So uh, it's easy here to use the power of market to push forward the progress, but it's not that easy in Taiwan. So uh, a little bit of my background, uh, I'm the chairman and CEO of Gini Academy as the Taiwan's equivalent of Khan Academy. And, uh, but actually my background is a medical doctor, um, but I changed my career into education. And also now, uh, uh, my organization and I have strong linkage to the government, uh, including the executive UN and the Ministry of Education and all the ministry, uh, all the Bureau of Education among the different cities and counties in Taiwan. And um, uh, I started uh, online education by uh, recording my own videos. So uh, in the first year, uh, I turned my career, I recorded uh, around 1,000 uh, instructional videos across the different subjects for uh, junior and senior high school students. And now our team grow into a, a, a size of th uh, 30 employees uh, and cross disciplines from software to uh, teaching, pedagogy, and to policy making. So um, what do Gini Academy do? Uh, what does Gini Academy do is uh, we, we build a platform. So this platform uh, is for K to 12. You can see all kinds of uh, such as mathematics and science, computer science and uh, English learning, all the subjects according to the common core in Taiwan. Um, so there's videos and interactive exercise uh, inside there. So the three pillars of our work is digital content software platform and teacher training. So the uh, left two uh, pillars is about building a smart learning assistant. So the content is um, and the platform together just like a uh, 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 assistant for students and teacher to learn and teach. Um, and we also emphasize on the role of teacher because it doesn't mean with online learning, we don't need teacher. Actually, we need teacher even more because teacher have to change his or her role from an instructor, an instructor to a facilitator. And it's different from uh, how they've been trained uh, when they were in uh, university. So uh, we collaborate with the uh, city or uh, county government uh, to do a lot of uh, teacher training. Uh, now uh, we have uh, 2.4 million registered users uh, in Taiwan. It's pretty much covered 80 to 90 percent of the uh, K-12 population in Taiwan. But registration is not the most important number we are looking into. Uh, we emphasize the importance of the weekly active users because uh, when we talk about learning, at least uh, you use once every week. Uh, it's a basic frequency. So uh, we didn't look into daily active users. We didn't look into monthly active users. We looked into the WAU. And uh, we also uh, produce a number called a level one teacher. Um, 
uh, this measurement is for uh, teachers who are really um, familiar with using technology to teach. So we, we have our data metrics so that we can uh, automatically know like for the past semester, how many teachers uh, adopt technology into their pedagogy regularly during the whole semester. And we will give them certificate and uh, to promote them to the city and county government. So uh, the government can also recognize them and let them become uh, the trainer of trainer. So why we do all this? Because we have the vision that uh, every child can be a lifelong learner. I think that's the common vision for all the K-12 uh, OER players in Taiwan. And uh, the mission of Junior Academy is to provide all children personalized learning from content to the environment. And we do believe that's a total solution. Uh, you have to have a holistic view of the whole things, including hardware, software, content, teacher training, and even um, the, the mindset of uh, parents, uh, it's all included. So um, uh, I think what we do is uh, a total solution for K-12 personalized learning. And why I say uh, we need ecosystem collaboration, because uh, in such a small country as Taiwan and uh, with such a small organization such as Junior Academy, it's very difficult that uh, just one organization trying to do everything. Um, so uh, in Taiwan, I think every sector has its limitation. Uh, the government is not good at innovation. I think that's probably not only the problem in Taiwan, it's all across the globe. Um, for online learning or OER, uh, especially in this digital area, uh, we have to be very agile. And like the development methodology in, uh, in Gene Academy is called Scrum. Uh, Scrum, uh, usually we have different sprint. Uh, one sprint probably from two week to four, four week. So we will build a minimal, a minimum viable product and uh, for every two or four weeks, we have to do the iteration based on data, based on the observ observation and research. But the plans from the government, the very waterfall kind of plan, uh, it's very difficult to do that kind of iteration. So uh, that's, that's why it's hardly, uh, it can hardly succeed. And also uh, within that plans, it's very difficult, especially in Taiwan to find top talents because uh, the, uh, the major like best software engineers usually not work in the government. Um, so it's also a, a difficult part for uh, the government. And the best talent probably is in the market, but the market is too small in Taiwan for K-12 students. So you can see the numbers on uh, the right, right hand side. Uh, for like the big market like China, India, and US, uh, you can see the population, the internet usage population, the student population, and um, uh, like the Onion Academy, by Jews and Khan Academy separately have uh, 30, 40, and 70 million registered users, um, and they can uh, gain revenue directly from uh, the B2C model. But in, in Taiwan, it's very difficult because we only have uh, 24 million uh, population and 2.4 million students. Um, so I think probably uh, uh, some of the other Asian countries have similar problem, but uh, the difficult part for K-12 is that it's very, very uh, aligned to a country's common core. So it's different from uh, other internet business. You can not try to include other country uh, into a one single market, uh, such as Pan-Asia or uh, uh, Southeast, a Greater Southeast Asia. Um, so 
uh, I think that's why Genie, as an MPO nonprofit organization, we have the we we gain the opportunity because, like Bill Gates said, uh, you can do catalytic or innovative philanthropy by finding the opportunity where government can and the market won't. But what's important, and I think K to twelve. Uh, OER is that kind of opportunity. And because of the uh, MPO uh, entity, we have the neutrality. And now we are uh, using um, collaboration strategy to coordinate the different governments and different corporate to co-create content and platform and teacher training. So how do we do that? Because we build the competency uh, in a small organization of uh, technology, we do have uh, 11 software engineers and uh, education. Uh, and so we have uh, very experienced uh, retired teachers uh, who help the government to do the common core. So who are very familiar with the, uh, the basic fundamental uh, common core in Taiwan. And we also have the uh, uh, experienced um, retired policymakers in time uh, in, in, in organization. So with this three uh, cross discipline uh, uh, competency, then we can coordinate uh, the frontline school and the public and the private sector. Um, so this is the uh, like big player in Taiwan. So we collaborate with Taipei City of the uh, online learning content. Uh, we are going to produce uh, 1000 uh, newer version uh, to our new curriculum, uh, 108, it's a 2019 curriculum um, of the new content with Taipei City. And we collaborate with new Taipei City. It's the biggest city in Taiwan with uh, one six of the population of Taiwan uh, to do teacher training. So if that model succeed and it can probably scale up to whole Taiwan. And from, for the private sector, we do uh, co-advocacy co with other uh, like-minded organization such as Teach for Taiwan, that's the equivalent of Teach for America. And also uh, the Keep Inspire School in Taiwan Alliance, that's the equivalent of uh, KIPP, the Knowledge is Power program in the US. And uh, also we collaborate with other content supplier, uh, like the traditional one publisher, and also uh, other um, uh, edutainment uh, company. Uh, so they create more uh, interesting and engaging content. And with our channel, uh, they can expand their impact. So that's why they are willing to put their content on our platform. And also we collaborate with a big enterprise such as Google, Line, uh, TSMC and Microsoft uh, because computer science is all their interest. And so they also uh, like to contribute some of the contents or even technology uh, on the platform so that they can get the top talent uh, from Taiwan to work for their company. Uh, and another major part for the um, collaboration is data. Um, so in Gene Academy, we have our own data from the platform and we have data uh, from outside our platform and easy to map into our BigQuery system and uh, we can push it into a different um, like meta base or even just uh, as easy as Excel or Google spreadsheet to do uh, analyze or uh, data visualization. And um, from that foundation, we can uh, push back the data to users to let them understand their own progress or we can aggregate the data and uh, and uh, give it to uh, uh, the policymaker. Um, and also, of course, we can do all kinds of uh, AI recommendation with traditional method or uh, machine learning, deep learning. So I think the cross-discipline uh, competency and the power of data is how 
can we find uh, the collaboration uh, between or across sectors? So um, what happened next? I think uh, with that kind of uh, uh, collaboration, it's very important to shorten the gap between policy and frontline uh, front reality. Uh, because the major resource for uh, K-12 OER uh, is still from the government. But most of the time, the government doesn't understand the reality of the frontline students, uh, schools, teachers. And we are happy to see that not only uh, the local government, but even the central government uh, spent time to understand the frontline reality. So it's President Tsai visited a rural school uh, in Taidong uh, two years ago. And I shared with her that uh, how our model work. So then she asked the Ministry of Education to uh, um, find a way out to collaborate uh, with uh, MPO such as Junyi. So um, I think uh, it takes a village to raise a child. It's an old saying. And it's true, I think, in Taiwan and probably in other similar uh, countries. Uh, I hope uh, our little experience can uh, help you guys. Thank you. OK, thank you, Ray. A very exciting share. OK, thanks. Uh, our next panelist is uh, Katsu from Japan. And also for Ray, this is several questions for you. You can try to answer in chat first and then we'll discuss probably later. Okay, Katsu, please. Okay, uh, hello, uh, my name is Katsuke Shigeta, I'm the president of, of Education Japan. Uh, today, I'd like to explain about the uh, current status of OER utilization in Japan in a brief. So, uh, I start from uh, a self-introduction first. I'm an associate professor at Information Initiative Center and the Associate Director at Center for Open Education at Hokkaido University. It's a North Side Public University in Japan. And I'm a president of Open Education Japan and a board of directors, Jenguk and Asuka Academy. And I'm a board of directors and Open Education Global. Um, basically, I'm an educational technology researcher about OER, MOOC utilization, and data analysis. So uh, I'd like to introduce a brief about the uh, Center for Open Education that I am directing uh, in the Iran perspectives. Uh, this is an organization to introduce open education for educational reform and improvement. Uh, this center developed OER with faculty and staff uh, about over 500 per year for blended learning at Hokkaido University. And we established several platform and learning analytic tools for students and faculty. At the same time, we create MOOC and open courseware for internationalization of the university. And recently in this COVID-19 situation, we support uh, remote lecture and distance learning uh, for faculty and uh, students. And about the um, initiatives of open education in Japan, we have several organizations with academics and industries. First one is uh, Open Education Japan. It is formerly Japan Open Courseware, founded in 2005. And it promotes open education and the information sharing among members, including 17 universities and five corporate members. And this organization is a sustaining member of OE Global. Second organization is JMOOC. It is founded in 2003. This organization promotes MOOC and online learning in Japan with 43 universities and 31 corporate members. And uh, in Japan, we have uh, several MOOC providers by the uh, mobile phone companies or some e-learning companies, something like that. And JMOOC uh, aims to coordinate these providers and try to promote MOOC and utilization of MOOC uh, in a national scale. Uh, 
And we have an interesting uh, project about OER utilization with translation. It is driven by Ask Academy. It is a nonprofit organization. Uh, this organization translates OER in Japanese and uh, open course in free. And when uh, Ask Academy translate the English was uh, some language, the uh, materials by other languages. They uh, asked uh, for the volunteers and the high school students for the translation activities. And uh, in some uh, high schools, they introduce this activity as an education project. And uh, currently, as Academy are seeing the big win of the new enrollment after the COVID-19 situation. On the other hand, uh, we have a survey for the in every institution in Japan, how they promote or offer or development MOOC or OER in Japan. And this survey was conducted in 2017, so it's not new data, but uh, I'd like to introduce a result. Uh, when we see the data, uh, we are seeing the relatively higher offerings of OER at universities and colleges. On the other hand, we are seeing the lower offerings of development of MOOCs. For example, we have just only 6% of universities and colleges uh, to introduce or develop MOOC. Um, the number of institutions in Japan uh, about the universities and colleges is 1,200. So the real number is quite high. Uh, so it means uh, 60 or uh, 70 universities are developed MOOC, but the portion is small so far. At the same time, we ask the institutions to offer or uh, utilize uh, OER MOOC about the uh, objectives. The result is that uh, about OER, more institutions aims to utilize OER to improve learning environment for students. On the other hand, more institutions uh, hopes to use MOOC for recruitment of students or a life of learning. So this kind of objective is very important to sustain the project. So we are doing this kind of research. And uh, actually we are planning to have a same research in the, this year. So we will show you the updated results uh, later on. And uh, this is the last slide. Uh, I'd like to talk about the OER utilization post the pandemic. Uh, so we are seeing that we are facing challenges how to sustain our education activities. Uh, in this perspective, we expect OER utilization as self learning and blended learning. It could avoid lecture at large classroom for infection prevention. At the same time, uh, for this situation, uh, the importance increases to share information about learning resources and the methodology for utilization. For example, we are facing challenges how to discover the appropriate OERs for the students and the faculty. So regional alliance solves the problem. We could share practices of OER utilization based on the locality of each region. And we can begin these activities from this conference and beyond that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Katu. And then, uh, welcome Jim from Thailand to share your context. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jin Dawi Klai Sang from um, Thai MOOC from Thailand and um, a bit about my background. I'm the associate professor at the Educational Technology and Communication Faculty of Education, Jiangong University. And at the same time, I'm also working 
working as the deputy director at Thailand Cyber University Project, which is the project under the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation. So um, today I'm going to um, provide you the introduction about Thai MOOC, which is the government project uh, aiming to enhance the learning opportunity for lifelong learners in Thailand. And this project we um, launched it since 2016. And until now we cooperate with over hundreds of universities, institutions, and also the government sector. And um, currently we have 472 open courses in 11 categories and more, uh, around five, uh, 570,000 users. Um, I think our situation in Thailand is similar to um, other country, which um, the back in 2011, where the first MOOC launch from Stanford University, then uh, many university have launched the MOOC courses. At the same time, um, at the country level, they also launched the projects, um, which is the country level or national MOOC platform, including Thailand. This is the information from the classcentral.com. So um, our stats. We, as I mentioned earlier, we started the service in 2016, um, focus on the courses for lifelong learners. And we have 570,000 users. And uh, interestingly, um, the average user during the COVID-19 increased 58%. Um, during that time, around 30, uh, 35,000 to 50 courses, the content from these MOOC courses. And if you see this chart on uh, the number of user in year 2019 is around 320,000 people users and is go up um, dramatically um, during the COVID-19. So for the year 2020, we have 570,000 uh, learners. And the completion rate is around one third is around 250,000 to graduate the MOOC courses. With, uh, we quite satisfied with this number. In terms of the learners, the, the age of our learner is quite uh, 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 lifelong learners because we have 13, 13 years old learners and uh, up to 30 plus years retired people who are taking the MOOC courses. And when we look closely, the statistics show that more than 50% of the MOOCs learners in Thailand are the working age, which is the largest groups of learners. So the idea of our Thai MOOC is we, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we uh, focus on the reskill and upskill for learners of all ages. So starting with uh, the students 13 plus years old who have to leave the school so this is one of their alternative way that they can take some of the MOOC courses and during working they can do upskill and uh, uh, during working uh, they can study time MOOC and correct the credit for later do the credit transfer and when they do uh, study in university they can use the time MOOC courses and um keep the courses for the transfer credits later. During working, they can take the Thai MOOC course, uh, not only for their obscure skill, but they can um, keep the record um, for later they, if they want to uh, continue their higher level of education. And also at the, um, the last group, if they are interested in um, you know, taking courses, they can continue their education even though they already retired. So Thai MOOC uh, 
has been here and um, with the cooperation with the nine higher education development networks. We have the nine hub throughout the country at the upper, uh, upper Norton higher education network. We have lower Norton and also from the south, from the central. So we working as the um, network hubs uh, throughout the country. So that's why we have the uh, more than 100 institutes who develop the, these open online courses, uh, which mainly are the higher education universities. We also work with the uh, public and private sectors as well. For example, um, we work closely with the Office of the Civil Service Commission, where do the training for the government employees and um, they use our courses and also we co-develop the courses to uh, for the new employers, uh, new employees. So all of the government new employee taking courses uh, in the time of course. In addition to that, we also have the international cooperation with uh, many countries, including Taiwan. Uh, for, tai uh, for Taiwan, we have, have uh, worked co uh, collaboratively with the National Xiaotong Universities, National Open University of Taiwan, and also Taiwan MOOC, where we have the cost exchanging. And uh, uh, when we have uh, the cost exchanging, meaning that we also give the opportunity for Thai learners to take the cost from the other MOOCs a uh, country, and then we ask the subtitle for Thai people to better understanding in terms of the content. And like I mentioned earlier, we also work closely with the government agency and also the public agency. For example, like I mentioned earlier, the Office of, of the Civil Service Commission will do the professional development for the online. Uh, online part for them. And uh, in terms of the content, we also work closely with the um, you know, public and private agency who expertise in uh, certain content. For example, we develop the open courses uh, related to digital literacy. So when we're talking about digital literacy, we try to uh, find the expertise in this field. For example, we work closely with Digital Economy Promotion Agency, where they are very keen and expertise in this area. We also work with private sector, for example, on the hospital, on the, the, uh, the airway, the Thai airway. So uh, for the content, the top five courses we have the highest registered students, including number one is psychology and daily life. Number two is photography, and then follow with the courses related to English, um, English skills. For example, English for startup and English for communication. And uh, here I would like to focus that all of our open uh, MOOC courses are developed based on the 10 standards of practice. We have developed this standard of practice based on the research study. And on our standard seven, we're talking about the copyright and the content where all of the our courses have applied the Creative Commons license to the content. Uh, here, I would like to share you uh, about the microcredit, the pilot pro project that under the cooperation with the Thailand Professional Qualification Institutes, the Sukhothai Thai uh, Tamatrat Open Universities, the Institute of Community Colleges, and the Thai MOOC. So basically, we have two pilot projects, and the most progressive one is about the elderly care giver courses that I would like to uh, show you one uh, example. So we use Taimu as a platform. And, and then uh, here we cooperate with the Inst Institute of Community Colleges. So learner who graduate from here can take our MOOC courses that we work co cooperatively with uh, among these 
Physics Institutes. And then when they complete uh, the courses here, they can uh, go and take the exam at the Thailand Professional Qualification Institutes to get the certificate. At the same time, when they get this professional certificate, they can uh, still you take the MOOC courses and keep for credits. And later they can continue their education at the open university. And then they can use some courses from the, and some they can transfer that experience to these open universities. So they can get the certificate both for working and both for academic, they can continue their education. And while they still working, if they work for the government, they can reskill and upskill using MOOC courses and Thai MOOC platform uh, for their professional development. And this is one example of the, uh, the cooperation with the Office of the Civil Service Commission. So this is the big picture of our platform. We not only focus on only the development of the MOOC course content, but we also working at the same time with the um, Thai MOOC account, which we try to have one single ID for all user to use MOOC course, not only from Thai MOOC, but we starting to work on the directory, the Thai MOOC directory where we include um, the MOOC platform from many um, institutes. And then a learner can use only one single ID to access to the content. We also at the same time develop the credit bank system. Uh, so learner will be able to transfer their uh, MOOC course into other, the degree or the uh, certificate. And also we develop the e profile system, which uh, create time of student ID and collect the data and learning records. So this is the big picture. According to the earlier slides, we try to have the lifelong learning ecosystem with the cooperation uh, uh, at the community level, including the provider, developer, researcher, instructor, and learners. And we have the common core, which is the MOOC courses, the course registry, MOOC directory, authentication, verification, and then with the partner MOOCs at the national and international level for the MOOC certificate and the credit bank. So this is the big picture of our Thai MOOC platform that uh, we start since 2017 and our uh, focus on lifelong learning and now uh, our main focus is not only the, um, the cost development, but we are moving toward the credit bank system. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jean. Yeah, that's a very uh, comprehensive uh, <laughs> explanation of uh, the, uh, the context. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, because uh, we have limited time, so uh, I, we have a very uh, interesting question from the audience. Uh, they are asking that uh, if we use this kind of uh, technology for our children or our uh, teenagers, and how do we have any plan to they then know how to uh, manage like time to do this? And uh, yeah, because usually they need some physical activity or they need their uh, social life. But uh, if we just keep them in the internet, it's probably not so healthy. So uh, do you have any uh, comment on that on those? Just one second, it's fine. Uh, who's gonna first to talk about? How about Jean? Uh, do you okay. have any time for your kids? Okay, this is very, very interesting questions. And um, I think like this is T-shirt. I think T-shirt is the key person who uh, have to, um, you know, like uh, give learners to, to see how they can manage, you know, this kind of learning environment. So, uh, but one of the very interesting fact that we found is that for our um, high school students, teacher try to choose some of the high education level courses for them, introduce them, using them as the uh, complementary, you know, for the content that uh, he or she teach. And then, 
uh, when you know like high school students have opportunity to take like um, university courses, they can find that passion, that goal. They can see like, okay, if they want to be engineer, this is how they go into uh, learn in the future. So this help them when they uh, set the goal for their future, the career, their uh, major when they enter the university. And I, I, we receive a lot of comment from the uh, complimentary from the teachers at the uh, K-12 level that this is how they uh, use our time move you know, for, for their um, students. But I think most important is, you know, like this is, teacher is the key to, to let them give them um, knowledge to how they can manage, you know, that learning ecosystem. <laughs> okay. So how about Kasu in your Jap in Japanese context? Yeah, thank you. Um, basically, I think about the hybrid settings, how to learn by uh, students. So we should use OER not only by now by themselves, also to use the knowledge in the real society and in the schools. Okay, uh, I think Ray already uh, yeah, used text to answer that. Yeah, he's mentioned that, uh, uh, is Ray here? Because I didn't see you anyway. You yes, want... I'm here. Okay, you want to rephrase that? Uh, sorry, can you uh, repeat the question again? And sorry because okay. I'm uh, you running from meetings to meetings. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay then okay. that's that's, that, the that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Ray is already answered in the chat that says uh, the key person, the key key person is the teacher. And they have to do that in the teacher training and about uh, how to manage the time and teach the kids how to manage time is uh, one of the uh, curriculum uh, aspects. All right, uh, Dave, do you have anything you want to say in your context, higher education part? I think uh, in the university, we try to give some summer school and help the high school student before they come to our university. And also uh, from the, some organization that can help the high school student to study our material by themselves, especially for the new program of the high, uh, high school uh, education system. They need have some uh, courses for self-study mm -hmm. so they can come to uh, OCW to study mm -hmm. the university level, but still, the teacher is the big key. Mm -hmm. uh, if the school uh, teacher can uh, feel this OCW is good, then high school student will come to our OCW to mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, uh, I think uh, we, the time is almost over and uh, the session will end here.